What's up guys? Welcome back to Fancy Goldfish Fanatics. Today we're going to be cleaning out the Aranda Mega Tank. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the system in depth and we'll also take a close look at the Lily. So stay tuned to find out more. Hey Fanatics family, welcome back. As always, check out those links in the description. You may notice, hopefully, the video and audio quality is hopefully significantly better in today's video or a little bit better. And that is because finally my brand new vlogging camera and microphone have arrived and this is the first video I'm gonna be using to shoot with. So hopefully the quality of the image is much better and also that audio is better as well. As I mentioned, today we're gonna to be taking a close look at the tank. I'm gonna be showing you exactly how I clean this tank out on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. We'll also take a look at the lily you may notice there is quite a lot of algae on the tank now we'll be taking a little look at the fish as well and overall I'm just going to be giving you a little tour on the tank so without further ado let me show you around the tank before we start our water change and our clean and have a little close look at what the tank is looking like how the algae has started to come on the back walls on the lily and how the fish are doing so I'm going to pick up the camera now and let's check it out First up, sorry for any reflection in the glass. It's quite light as you can see outside, so apologies for any reflection. Let's take a little close look at the fish and the lily and see what they are looking like. So as you can see, the fish are looking absolutely phenomenal. Clementine is looking absolutely brilliant. Hopefully you can really see the colours of the fish under the new camera lens. Hopefully the quality is much, much better. And then if we move on to Oreo, you can see he is doing absolutely great. Looking really good, really nice size to him. And the fins are just absolutely lovely. And then finally, let's take a close look at Nero. Again, doing really, really well. It seems like we have got rid of the anchor worms. I did have to treat them twice to eradicate the anchor worms, but I haven't spotted any new ones on the fish either. Let's take a little side look at the tank as well. You can see the tank is looking a tiny bit cloudy, but bearing in mind it hasn't had a water change for a week and a half, and you're looking for looking through eight feet of water depth. So that is the side view of the tank. And then finally, let's take a little close look at the lily. As you can see, the lily has grown tremendously. We're getting lots of algae growth on the pot and also on some of those leaves as well. And you'll see the pads are now reaching up to the surface, looking really, really good. So I'm going to be cleaning off the lily here, cleaning the pot. We're going to be doing a gravel clean on the substrate as well. And we're also going to be cleaning the filter. So I'm just going to put the camera down now, show you what equipment I'm going to be using to clean the tank, and then we can get on to the cleaning. It's going to be really simple cleaning this tank. We're going to use a few different pieces of equipment. First up is the good old trusty filter fleece. I'm going to use this to clean that pot, clean any algae off the walls, off the glass. And then also I will use the magnet as well to clean off any algae off the glass as well. So really handy to have small bits of filter fleece. We also have this larger piece of filter fleece that I'm going to cut to shape of our filter. Also having a towel is really handy. So we've got a nice towel to mop up any spills. Normally I'd probably use a few towels, but generally I don't find that I get too many spills with the siphon that I'm gonna be using today. So large siphon, always prefer to use the really long siphons, 60 centimeters or two foot. Nearly reaches the bottom of the tank, so really good to use these ones. Then I'm gonna be using some pieces of hose. This one attaches onto my tap, so I can fill up straight from the tap and add some dechlorinator. And then this is the one I'm gonna be using. That's gonna be going from the tank all the way out into the garden, and then I'm just gonna drain it onto the garden. So without further ado, let's get on to cleaning this tank. Let's start the gravel hoover, and then I'll check back with you in a second. So first thing to do is get the glass lids open, and we're gonna get our siphon into the tank. Then I'm simply just gonna attach this piece of pipe right here straight onto the siphon and then as I mentioned I'm just going to siphon straight out into the garden. So I'm just going to take the end of this pipe here 
place it outside the patio door and then we can get that siphon started. So now we've got that siphon started, I'm simply just going to start hoovering that gravel. As you'll hopefully be able to see on the new camera, we get quite a lot of dust and build up that comes out of that substrate and it's really good to give it a good thorough clean. So I'll spend the next 20-25 minutes hoovering out this gravel or sand I should say and then we will get on to cleaning the other bits just while that's hoovering away. I will move it throughout the tank so I'll move it at both ends to make sure I get all of that grit and dust and detritus out of the sand bed. So you may notice or you may have heard me mention that this system is running on an airlift. Essentially the water flows over the weirs into that filtration, goes through a layer of filter fleece, filter foams and then there's about 30 to 35 kilos of biomedia underneath that. Then the water comes up a pipe and is returned to the tank using an air stone. Now this air stone is right at the bottom of this pipe. As the air rises to the top it pulls the water with it and returns it to the tank. This means that if I leave that siphon going and forget to turn my air pump off, it means that the water can simply stop flowing back into the main tank. I'm not gonna run any pump dry, I'm not gonna damage anything, I'm not gonna damage any impellers, and it's really, really simple. This, the system is super simple to run. I do need to turn off the wave maker, so I'm going to unplug that now. So I just unplug the wave maker to stop the movement, and then if I simply want to turn off the return from the filter, I just say, Alexa, please turn off the flow and then you'll see the tank turns off the return. So now I don't have that bubble wall running at the back of the system and I don't have the return running back into the tank. So now I can continue my siphoning. You may also see that some of the stones have been uncovered in the lily pot. So I'm gonna add a little bit more sand to the lily pot as well because obviously the fish have started to dig in it. But it's worked really well. The lily has been in the tank for about 14 days now and it has grown at an absolutely tremendous rate. And I'm surprised the fish haven't done more digging. They haven't been able to get through any of those really large stones that I have in the tank. And overall, it's just done really, really well and exceeded any expectations that I originally had. So I'm gonna leave the siphon running now. I might get to work on cleaning the other areas of the aquarium. So I'm probably gonna focus on now cleaning those lily pads off, making sure they're nice and clean, and then we'll work on removing that filter fleece, placing the new filter fleece in, and getting it all ready before we start to top the tank up again. Now we are starting to drain all of that water out of the tank. As the filter is its own separate unit, I will occasionally turn the filter back on so it can pump out the water into the main tank and make sure it keeps that sort of equilibrium so that the filter's not full of water and the main tank is like half empty because it will cause a lot of pressure and potentially burst the silicon off the filter. So I occasionally make sure the filter and the tank are a similar level because the water has to flow through the top of the filter to go down into it. So I'm still cleaning out some of the gravel, still siphoning that out, making sure there is no dirt and detritus left behind. But I think it's now time to get to work on the lily. So simply for the lily, I'm just gonna try and brush off any algae on the pads. And obviously once those pads reach the surface of the water, they're not gonna collect any algae after that. It's just making sure that they look nice and clean. You don't really have to do this in nature. The lilies will just get covered in algae. But obviously because I'm looking at the side view of this tank, I want to make sure it's looking nice and clean. I'm also going to use a little bit of this filter fleece, as you can see here. Simply just tear a little bit off, and then I will be able to clean that pot, making sure it looks really nice for me and anyone viewing the tank. You may notice that as I gravel vac and gravel hoover all of this sand, 
there's not actually that much dirt and detritus that's coming up and out of the sand, which is really good as it shows me that the filter is doing a really, really good job. Now, I would say I have to change the filter fleece probably once every seven days as it does get quite dirty, even with only three fish in the tank. And I'm gonna assume as I start to get more fish, which hopefully should be very soon, that I will be able to probably, well, I will have to be cleaning that filter fleece more often than not as the bio load will increase. However, I think that the filter does a really good job. You can see not much dirt and detritus is coming out of the sand. The fish are doing really healthy. You'll also notice I managed to clean off the uh, pot the lily was in and the lily pads as well. So now generally what I do is I leave this running for around 45 minutes or so. I'm generally aiming to do around a 30 to 40% water change. Now, when I add my fresh water, I do add tap water. I used to use a purifier unit, but for a tank this size, using a purifier means I have to run the purifier for around 12 hours a day to produce that much water. And it's simply not viable for me to do that, having it connected to the tap all day long because I do need to use the tap for cooking, drinking, etc., etc. So what I'm gonna do is after this has drained for around 45 minutes down to around the 30 to 40% level, and I do that every sort of nine to 10 days, then I'm gonna to top up with tap water. The tank is at room temperature. It's sitting at around 18 degrees and the fish are doing absolutely fine. A lot of people wanna keep their fish at a lot warmer temperatures, but I feel like it does really well at this temperature. And I'm sort of experimenting a little bit with the temperatures, seeing how low energy consumption this tank uses as well, especially without the heater. So whilst we're waiting for this to drain, I'm gonna take a look at the filter. I'll show you how it works in a little bit more detail because I do get people asking me, how does your filter work? I don't quite understand it. And then we'll get to changing the filter fleece as well. Hopefully you can see this is the filter. I know it's really, really dark, but hopefully you can see what goes on. Obviously we are dropping the water level down here. So hopefully I can get the camera to focus, but here we have the water line, but generally the water line sits a lot higher. The water flows over this weir and into here. Now you can see that filter fleece is super, super dirty, really, really dirty. That catches all of the waste before it falls through this egg crate. And then hopefully, the camera can pick that up. We've got some, let's see if we can get that to focus. We've got some filter foams here. And then once that water travels through that, it then goes down onto all of this alpha grog into the filter section. We've got loads of bags of alpha grog under here, all the way back, back there. And then the water travels up a pipe, which runs along the back of the tank. Let me open the lid here. So there's a pipe just along here. That water runs along that and back into the tank underneath. It's quite hard to see, probably not gonna capture it too well, but essentially the air stones or the air lines, which are back here, there is one that goes down that pipe. So the water travels up and then back through. And then the other air lines are those two air stones, which run at the back of the tank. So now I'm simply just gonna change this filter fleece out. I have this new filter fleece here. So we're simply just gonna change it out with this new filter fleece. As I said, leave that running for around 45 minutes. And I thought quickly, once I turned the camera off, I thought, hang on, why don't I show how the airlift system works a little bit more closely? And also we need to start mag using the flipper magnet on the glass to start cleaning it as well. So I thought if I can hopefully show you when I turn the flow back on in that back corner, hopefully you'll be able to see that there is a pipe back there. Now, right up in that back corner is a pipe. When I turn the flow on, you'll see that water will start to flow out of that because as the air rises up the pipe, the water will return out of the filter. Obviously it's gonna be quite a slow flow because there is now quite a head of pressure that the bubbles need to rise up and push over the top. Hopefully now you can see that the water is starting to flow out of that pipe. Obviously when the water level is higher, that flow is much stronger because the bubbles have less of a head pressure to rise up and push it over. So if the water level was here and the pipe was here, it would have a much stronger flow, but you can kind of see how it comes out of that pipe. But when the water level is higher, obviously it has that stronger flow and it pushes along the top. So now as we have the tank draining, you can obviously see our Aranda at the front here. 
they are still absolutely happy. But now as this tank's draining, I'm just gonna start cleaning the glass and then that is really it until I need to start filling up the system. So all I've essentially done is used the gravel hoover on the sand, cleaned the plant pot, cleaned the lily, and then I'm gonna put that new filter fleece in as well and then just clean the glass. So really simple. When I'm not filming, this job takes me around 10, 15 minutes, and then obviously I have to wait for around 45 minutes to an hour for this to drain, and then it takes me about 15 minutes to fill back up. So it's only around 20 minutes of work, and then I just have to sit around and wait for it to do it. And in the meantime, I can edit this video. So I'm gonna do the glass now, and then we can start hopefully filling it up in around 30 minutes. Now that is the glass clean. I'm gonna keep moving this around occasionally to try and hoover up different areas of the tank to make sure there is no spots or dead zones where there's lots of bits of dirt and detritus accumulating. But as I mentioned, I'm gonna now leave this for about, probably about another 25 minutes, let it drain down, and then we can start topping up the tank. And then hopefully in a couple of hours, the tank will look crystal clear and I can get some really nice shots of the tank and the fish. Now, as you can see, we are probably at around the 30% range and the siphon has been running for around 35 to 40 minutes now. So I'm just gonna do one more, probably five minute hoovering session and then we're gonna head over to the tap, hook this piece of pipe, as you can see here, up to the tap, add our dechlorinator for the tank and then we can get this filled back up turn it all on and then hopefully in around a couple of hours we'll get some nice shots of the fish and sort of have a finalized end of the video where we can have a close look at the fish, close look at the lily, see how the tank's doing and then hopefully in, I really wanna say in a few videos we're gonna get some more fish. I'm really hoping we can get some more fish because we definitely need some more color in the tank. So I'm gonna now head over to the sink, give this five more minutes and then we'll start to hook up the tank ready to fill it back up. Now, as you can see, we have our fresh water going back into the tank. I always make sure that the water is pretty close to the temperature of the tank. So I do sometimes use a little bit of warm water, mix it together. As you saw, I added the dechlorinator as well. So we've added the dechlorinator and dosed that for the amount of water within the system, not the amount of water we are adding to the system. So we wanna make sure all of that water is dechlorinated, has no chlorine, chloramine, or heavy metals in it. So that has all been taken care of with that dechlorinator. So now I'm just gonna sit back, let the tank fill up, get some cool shots of the fish, and then after it's full, we can wrap up the video. There we have it, the tank is now full, the filter fleece has been changed, the glass is clean, the lily and the lily pot are clean, and most of all, the fish are absolutely loving it and absolutely happy. So that is it for today's video. Hopefully you have enjoyed seeing the Goldfish Mega Tank, how I clean it on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, and also a little catch up on how the Aranda are doing. If you wanna see more of this tank on a day-to-day -day basis, then make sure you check out our Instagram. The link is down below, and also our Facebook page because we are posting there daily. And now I finally have my brand new camera. We're gonna be getting some hopefully amazing shots of these fish on a day-to-day -day basis. So as always, thank you all for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please leave those down below. But as always, remember to keep those water changes up and happy fish keeping.